Hello, hello, and welcome. Hola, Chronicles of a Daisy. Welcome to Chronicles of a Daisy. My name is Emily Gasca, and I am here today to share with you an important topic, a topic that I think is very crucial for us to understand as educators and as women and moms and wives. It's important for us to understand the roles and how the family dynamics work in order for us to have unity. So last week I talked to you, I shared a little bit about myself. I shared who I am and my mission. My mission is for us to cultivate an environment that is filled with love, with joy, with peace, and lots of happiness as a mother, as a wife, as an educator, and that everywhere we go, we can cultivate an environment that we are being able to release and produce joy and love and peace and patience and understanding and kindness and unity. So in order for us to understand that, it is very important for us to understand the roles of a family because it all begins with the couple and then the family. That's when we multiply. So for us to understand the principles of a family is important because it's going to help us understand and see our children from a different lens and a different perspective. So I thank you for coming back for our episode this week. I thank you for being here to continue being a part of this community and this ecosystem that I am on a mission to build to empower women and to show you that you have everything inside of you to be the amazing mother, the amazing wife, the amazing educator that you need to be. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk about the husband. Let's talk about the roles of the husband. We're going to talk about the roles of a wife. And we're going to talk about the roles of children. And as we identify each role, it's important for you to remember what happens when one of these roles is not aligned. Okay, or what happens if one of these roles is missing, right? There's a gap. So please make sure that you open up your eyes of understanding, open up your ears and your heart and your mind to receive and be able to understand that if one of these roles is not aligned, then there's a gap. And how do we fill it? How do we close the gap? Because we cannot proceed with a, with a gap there. But there's so many families that have them. And that is a lot of the reasons why we have so many different personalities, different challenges in our classrooms with our students and even with our children. If we are single, if there there are any single parents listening. So for you to be able to understand your children, you need to know what are they missing? What is, what is at the root of their behavior? What is at the root of the challenges that they are facing? How can I help this child? How can I help this young adolescent? How can I help them strive? All right. So let's get started with the husband. What is the husband's responsibility? What is the husband, the role of the husband? Now, the husband was created to protect his family. He is the protector. If you notice, men have this natural ability inside of them. It just naturally comes out. They are the protectors. They defend. You think of the lions, right? We have a tribe of a lion. If you see that the lion, the male, is very protective of his females and the, their children, their cubs, That is the role of a husband. That is the role of a male figure in a family. They are the ones who are leading the tribe, right? They lead the family. And they are also the ones who provide for the family. They are the ones who go out and hunt for the food. They are making sure that the needs are met of the woman in their life and the children. Or the cut. I'm making an analogy to help some of you because sometimes we see um, animals in nature or other things, and that helps us understand it and put in a different perspective for us to be able to receive the information. And if you are part of my ecosystem, I want you to understand that your the husband, the man in the family has a specific role. And what happens when we try to step over that role as women, as the wife, as a mother? 
What happens when we are clashing or not allowing the natural, uh, the natural instinct, talents, and who the man was created to be, the husband, the father? What happens when we try to come in between that or we don't agree with it because of our childhood trauma or how we grew up or the what we experience what happens right these are the things i want you to think about so as we're talking about the husband who is the protector he leads the family and he provides that is what the male figure does in a family dynamic that is what he was created to be so those are natural instincts that a man has when we go on and talk about the wife, the woman, the role of the wife, the role of the mother is to comfort, right? Mothers, that is our natural instinct is to comfort our babies, comfort our children, co provide comfort for others as well. If we're in the classroom, we're also comforting. We find ourselves comforting our students especially the younger ones, but even the older ones, sometimes they may have experienced something and they come into the classroom and they have to talk to somebody about it. And our job is to comfort. It's our natural instinct to comfort. And our job is to nurture, nurture the children, nurture others and to teach them. We teach the children when families were growing up back in the days, it was the husband would be providing going to work. The wife would stay at home and raise the kids like that's a job, a stay at home mom. And right now we have so many moms that are working. We work and we have careers. If you're an educator and you're listening to this podcast, you, if you have a family or plan to one day, you are a working mom. So teaching looks a little bit different now for women than what it did back in the days. And what have we done to adapt to the changes? What have we done to teach our children and to show them right from wrong? I think that's an important question we have to ask ourselves. The time that we spend with our children, they spend more time at school than they do with us. So the time that they are spending with us, how valuable and how much quality time are we actually having with them? It's not about the amount of time we spent with them because that's one of the things that really will uh, try to set in as in guilt for not spending enough time with them. It's not about the amount of time we spend with them. It's about the quality time we are spending with them. In the hour that we have, or if you have a bedtime routine or a morning routine, what are you doing during that time? Whether it's 10 minutes or it's an hour, how are you teaching your children? What are you teaching your children? We will be discussing the different seasons of a child's life in the next following episodes. And the I will share the first season is zero to five years old, which is discipline. And I will redefine discipline because discipline is not necessarily harsh or punishment that we're not going to combine the two because discipline is showing boundaries and discipline is showing right from wrong. Then between five and 12 is when we're training them. We're training them how to be human beings in society how to be citizens, what character traits, we're identifying their character traits, and then we're able to pour into that so they can identify what do they want to do, what's their purpose in life. Once we've established that, then we're going to move on to the coaching, right? Then we're side by side, we're coaching, that, that's where we're really coaching our kids between the ages of 12 and 18. Once they turn 18, that's it. It's a friendship. 18 and over, it, we've done everything we've had to do to create young adults who are going to be successful. So when they turn 18, we become friends. Friends because they know right from wrong. Friends because they know that we trained them and then we took the time to coach them. So as women, I want you to think about this because it, this is an opportunity to start reflecting. We must reflect in order for us to see change. 
So what are we doing during the time that we are spending with our children? And the job of the children is to love their parents and obey their parents. Love is actions. Love is when we choose to love others, how do we show them? You will hear me talk also about the Gary Chapman. He has the five love languages, which I love. I love his framework and I love the way he breaks it down. If you have not read that book, I definitely recommend reading a the, the book by Gary Chapman, The Five Love Languages, because it helps you identify what, how am I reaching others and what is my love language? What do I need to receive or feel loved? What do I need to give my children in order for them to receive and feel loved? How are they receiving love? What do they need from me? And it can fl- fluctuate, right? It could change because some days they may need something more than the others, but there's definitely one dominant love language that they have we all have and it's usually the way we give it so as we identify the husband is at the top of the how could we say it like the umbrella right we have the husband at the top then we have the wife then we have the children and together we form an ecosystem within our home together we are part of a family together we are building We are cultivating environments and we are establishing the legacies that we're going to leave for our children and their children's and their children's children. How do we handle challenges as a family? How do we handle when something does not go the way we want it to go? How do we handle that? Our children are watching. And this is all part of the ecosystem that we create in our homes and identifying the roles that we have like who is the fi- who has the final say and why and making sure that you have goals as a family what are our goals f- three years from now five years from now where do we want to be what do we want for our children what do we want for our marriage what do we want for our relationship it's important to identify this so you have a goal and you know where you're going and it's you're going to take a path. We're going to go down a path to get there. But if we don't have an, a destination, if we don't have a goal, how are we going to get there? It's time we start living life intentionally and being very consistent with the things that we do to reach those accomplishments, to reach those goals. And it's important to have goals for your family and for yourself and for your career. Life is such a beautiful yet hard thing to walk in, but that's life. We can make it harder. We can choose to make it harder or we can choose to navigate through the hardships together, knowing we have a goal and we're going to get there. So as I leave with you this week, as I leave with you this week, I really want you to ask yourselves these questions and analyze the wife role, the husband role, and the children's roles. Where is there a gap and how can we seal it? How can we close it? What do we need to do in order for that gap to be filled? Is there times where I'm trying to lead the family? If so, why? Where is that coming from? Why am I trying to lead? Because sometimes our actions or our beliefs can be rooted in pride. Right? So if we want to change the family dynamics and want better for our children and our future, we've got to be very vulnerable with ourselves and transparent with our children and our family come from a culture where asking for forgiveness is not something that is easily done or even done or talked about. And it's time that we break those barriers, acknowledge when we make a mistake and ask for forgiveness, forgive ourselves. There have been many times where I have taken the time to sit down with my children and explain to them and apologize but it's being vulnerable and transparent with them. That is where 
we truly shine as human beings and as parents, especially as parents, because we're showing our children, if we can be vulnerable and transparent, so can you. It's not just about telling them, right? I, I really had a hard time when there was challenges in the classroom and sometimes kids would not want to apologize. They just would not want to do it. And it was a decision that I had, am, am I trying to force the apology on my students or is it something that they're, they're not used to? They don't know what it means. And that takes humility as well. And to be able to apologize doesn't just mean I'm sorry for, right? The words are, our words are powerful, yes, but it does not just mean we apologize and that's it. No, an apology and asking for forgiveness means that we will change our behavior. We will be conscious of what we've done and not do it again try our hardest not to do it again, right? Because we're human beings. Nobody is perfect, right? We give ourselves grace, but it allows us to see this is a mistake and I'm not going to keep making the same mistake. Forgiveness is for ourselves as well. When we forgive ourselves and we ask for forgiveness, now I'm talking about if somebody comes to us and asks for forgiveness, or if we've done something, somebody has done something to us intentionally and they're not ready to ask for forgiveness. They're just, they don't, they're not sorry for what they did. They feel like what they did, they were in their right standing and their right mind and that they're, that's what it is. And you're wrong. We or the people do not apologize for what they've done. We forgive. Forgiving is such a beautiful, freeing habit to have, but not just habit because Forgiveness is more powerful than people actually think. And it truly does something in our physical body and in our spirits to be able to walk in freedom and walk in a loving and joyful and peaceful environment with patience. I may be doing the same thing the person has done to me, yet I'm upset with them. So it takes a lot of reflection. And as a family, forgiveness should be something that we're constantly doing, something that we are growing together. We are growing as a family. We're establishing new habits. We're establishing new roles, right? From what we grew up with, because what we grew up with, it things need to change. Things have changed in society, in the world. Things are so different. We cannot continue to think the same way as our parents did and our ancestors because it did. it's not working for the today and the tomorrow. So as we share today the roles and why it's so important to cultivate a sense of family, but a sense of forgiveness, it's important to cultivate a sense of what is my role and what is the children's role and what is the husband's role and how do we navigate through the challenges of life together? How do we get through the challenges when the, my husband and I are facing a challenge and we're trying to get to the bottom and figure out what's the best way to proceed? Are we avoiding challenges? Are we avoiding speaking up because of what we feel or think our partner is going to say or our children are going to say? It's important to understand the seasons of life of children as well. And I will be talking more about this because what happens when we skip a season or we don't fully train the child, coach the child, or teach them discipline right from wrong? What happens? And how does that affect their lives? Not only does it affect our lives as mothers and wives and fathers and husbands, it affects their lives as what we are teaching them, how we are raising them is has a direct impact on their future. It's going to, to determine how they handle workforce, how they handle school, college, and different areas, friendships, relationships. But I want to establish the foundations. If you're here with me and you're going to be a part of my ecosystem and in our community, then you need to understand the roles. And that foundations are so important. 
You cannot build on a faulty foundation. You cannot build without knowing and understanding how many pillars it's going to take to build your building, the building, the home that you want to build. The foundation is the husband, the wife, the father, the mother, and the children are after. They come after. That's another thing is also making sure who are we putting first? When do I need to start pouring into myself too? What do I need from my husband, my children? What do I need from my coworkers, from my administrators or the, my bosses, the people I work with? It's knowing how to speak up, knowing what you need so you can be proactive and not reactive. Because when we're reactive, that is when the lashing out comes out or the screaming, the frustration, or just the big blow ups, all those emotions that were held in or all, all that frustration, it just it inevitably comes out. I want to just re recap what was shared because I shared some nuggets that I think are going to be very crucial for us in the next uh, season, the next couple of weeks as we continue to identify what are our foundations, what are we establishing a family on, what are the foundations in our classroom, and how is this affecting our students, the children that walk into our classrooms, where are they growing up? We have kids who are coming in from families who are being raised by grandmas or aunts or uncles or grandparents or they're being in foster homes foster care we have kids children young adults who have been from home to home with different families different roles and all of that matters because if they're only being raised by women they're only being comforted they're only being taught they're only being nurtured but where is that protection coming from? Though the women are do we do an amazing job of protecting too, but we have to be very conscious of what the male figure, the protector in the male figure, that instinct that they have, what is missing. We don't have it. It's just we're not built that way. So how can we equip our children? in receiving that protection from a male figure, finding role models, right? There's so many things you, we can find role models and advocate for our children. Is there a male figure in the building? Leaders. Yes, women are leaders. We lead. We have that you know, in so many different areas. We are leaders as well, of course. But again, the instinct of the male figure in the family to lead the family is different. And they're, they're just built to lead. We may not be built to lead that way, but we are leaders. So it's knowing what is our children missing? What is it that they need our students and why this is important to understand because it will allow us to see why are they behaving this way? Why are they reacting this way when I'm asking them to do something? Why are they responding in this way or taking this attitude towards what I'm asking them to do? Okay, so as I shared the roles of the male figure, the woman figure and the children in a family and what it takes for us to feel a sense of wholeness as we're being raised in a family and how it affects us, how it affects our children. You're going to be able now that you've receive this information, you're going to be able to go out and see what our children, our students are lacking. What is it that they need and show up for them and show up for yourselves. What did I miss as a child? What was I missing? Did I just have a father who was providing and providing for the family and that's all he knew how to do? Did I have a mother who only taught how to teach but may not have been nurturing or comforting? Some of us lack these qualities, the instincts, we be, we've become numb to them because of our, bat, our childhood, what we experience as children, childhood trauma. And how am I showing up for my children? Because this is all subconscious. This is all in our subconscious. And we act the way we react sometimes without even realizing it. This is why we have to dig deep and understand what is the role and how do we show up? How are we going to show up?
for our children? What do we need to do? Where's the gap in my life? Is there a gap in my life? I love you all so much. I thank you for being with me on today because this is a very deep subject, but I am on a mission to truly help all of us, empower us to cultivate an environment that is filled with love, with joy, and with peace and patience and unity. And it starts with our families. It starts with our families. We cannot be in the classroom and not understand what is happening behind the scenes in our children and our students' lives. There's so much going on. So in order for us to understand and reach those students who some of them may be soaring and some of them may be struggling. But I also want you to apply this in your family. We're, we are amazing human beings. Being educators and being mothers is such a beautiful role to be. It's a privilege to be able to do that. It's a privilege to be able to have children. It's a privilege, a blessing to be able to have children. And a blessing to be able to go and teach other children. Like there's so much passion in us. You are passionate. You are amazing educators. You are amazing mothers. And the more we know, the better we can do. The more we know, the more changes for a brighter future we have. It's time we live our lives with intentionality and with purpose. So thank you so much. Let's recap today for all of you amazing listeners. Husband roles, wife roles, children's roles, and how it affects our family dynamics and our students in the classroom. So as we go on this week, as we are listening, you may want to replay this to be able to write down the questions because there are some really good questions that I truly believe are going to help you identify things and changes. And they're simple. The hard part is thinking about it and writing it down. But once we get started, oh my goodness, it is going to change your life forever. <sighs> I cannot wait to see all of you writing in and sharing with me the amazing transformations because it's going to take place, whether in your family or in your classroom, it's going to take place. It's just, it's all about knowledge and knowing. And once we know, we can do so much better. And together, we are part of an ecosystem of women on a mission to cultivate an environment that's filled with love, with joy, with peace and patience and unity. And so much growth will take place. When the foundations are established, growth is just going to skyrocket. It's going to boomer, boom, boom. It's going to boom. So thank you so much. You all have an amazing week. I love you. And I hope you are back next week for the next episode following this series of how to cultivate an environment filled with love, with joy, and with peace. Love you all and talk to you soon. Bye. Adios.